Welcome to the Panic Room. I'm Kat Panic, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do this vintage hairstyle and this vintage makeup look. Um, this is something I wear every day. Uh, super simple to do once you get the hang of using foam rollers and no heat. Also, I have very fine thin hair and I have very short hair. It's about here. So for those of you who do have fine thin hair, this is a good tutorial for you. Um, also, like I said, it's a no heat hair tutorial. Something that I am very passionate about because I feel like heat really damages hair, especially when it is fine and thin, and when you chemically process it like I do. I'm also going to be showing you this makeup look. This is the same makeup look I wear every day. It's very simple and very easy to follow, and it is a little bit of a vintage vibe look that goes with the hairstyle appropriately. Um, you guys are joining me in the panic room. This is my makeup studio um, where I bring all my clients for their hair and makeup needs. Um, I will be showing you guys a few of my favorite things in the studio while I'm doing my hair. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please post down below. Otherwise, we're going to get started. This hair dryer here is actually from the 1980s, and I don't know if you guys can see, it's like a dusty pink. Um, I have a retro 1950s hair dryer chair in my garage right now, but because it's so heavy, I haven't had a chance to actually bring it into the house yet, which when I turn the sunroom into a waiting room for my clients, that's where it's going to be, mostly just because it's fun to sit in. Um, this one works as well as the one in the garage, but the one in the garage is actually my favorite. It's a mint green and it has like a full ensemble. It even has a little ashtray in the armrest. This one doesn't. Um, but this one's nice because it's a little bit smaller, so it fits better in the panic room, I would say. Um, but yeah, so when I put my hair in wet sets, if I don't have a lot of time for I can't sleep in my wet set, I'll sit under this dryer and it works like a charm. I'll put it on for you guys so you can see how loud it is. Um, and what I like to do is that, yeah, if you can heat that curl up in the sponge roller to like a moderate heat, not a hot heat, but like a moderate heat, and then let it cool on its own, um, you're gonna come out with a better curl because it's gonna able to, it's gonna cool on its own and retain that shape. It starts off pretty cool, but then it gets really warm and it's nice. I actually fell asleep in it a few times. Probably something you shouldn't do, but it gets pretty relaxing and the white noise is even better. It was really cheap actually, I think it was only like $100. I probably could have got it for less, but I really liked the lady and I didn't want a little baller, um, especially because it did work and it was in mint condition. It had never actually been used. So, and also it was pink, so I kind of needed to have it. It was a no brainer. Also at this step, what I like to do is start my skincare. So when the curls are actually drying and they're warming up and then they're cooling, I get my skincare on so the skin actually has a chance to absorb it. Right now I'm just using the RA9 by Arbonne because it's vegan, it's cruelty free, and I have a good friend who sells it, so I like to support her. This is the toner. I really would like to put this in the atomizer so it doesn't like shoot out like that. So we're gonna start with the restorative day cream with SPF 50. I kind of like to overuse my product, I'm sorry. No shame all the moisture on my face. And then I'll go in with some eye cream. I only put it under here because my primer sits up there. Alright, out you go. Come on, get out of here. 
Also, I like to play some retro tunes at this time. So typically I'll go into Spotify and just look up like a 1950s playlist, some, whatever I'm kind of feeling. Um, I do love listening to CKUA. It's my favorite radio station. And at one o'clock on Sundays, Roy's Record Room plays. And he's really good at bringing all sorts of really ambiguous sort of sounds from that decade. Anything from like 1910 to the 1960s, he'll bring out. And I find a lot of my um, favorite songs, like I'll figure them out from there because he'll bring in like just so many different sorts of bands and he always has like really interesting things about them that he talks about too, so really enjoy that. So this is my Bluetooth re like retro speaker. Um, this one's by I Isaac Mizra Mizrahi, New York. I hope you guys can see there. I got it actually as a Christmas gift from one of my clients and I absolutely love it. So it's Bluetooth to my phone. So what you do is you just turn it on and then you lift the little knob and then you turn on like the volume and it plays and it's so fun. All my clients have come in here like, hey, is your music coming from that radio? I'm like, yep. And then they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. It's so cute. So um, it's what become one of my little favorite knickknacks for the padding room. Thanks, Sherry. And since I'm having like story time by the air chair here, um, this is also one of my favorite vintage mugs. Um, this pattern has a certain name for it, um, but I don't know it off by heart. I'll post it down below once I like actually look it up. But I know it has a specific name. And I found this at a garage sale as well, and actually it was given to me because I had bought like a whole lot of like everything you can think of. And so it's like, oh, do you like that mug? Here, you can just throw it in and you can have it. So um, it's become one of my favorites. It's a nice little Pyrex mug. And yeah, it's got a stamp on the bottom, but I'm not going to be able to read it because it's full of coffee right now. Um, but this sort of tealy blue is actually one of my favorite colors. People always say like, oh cat, you only like pink, everything you want is pink. And it's like, yeah, but this tealy blue, it sets off pink so well, plus it's like true to the decade of the 50s. So it's like, yep, yeah. if I can't have pink, it's probably gonna be this color. This is a little legit pink hamper from the 50s. It's got a little Star Wars on the corner. Um, I'll showcase it. In one of my future videos when I go through like some of my favorite vintage things that I found like through friends or garage sales or like thrifting um, because I really enjoy those videos especially now when you're kind of stuck inside and you can't really do a whole lot. Those sorts of videos have really gotten me through especially the antique roadshow. <sighs> Thanks grandma for getting hooked up on the antique roadshow. Um, so I will have like some videos of like really fun things that I found at garage sales or thrift stores and I'll showcase my hamper a little bit more, as well as probably this chair and many other things. Um, also, this antique Moo I want to say, I don't want to say it's true. It, it's probably like 70s, reads 50s, but I don't actually know. Um, I found it for $2 in a secondhand store. I knew I needed to have it. So it's really fun because it's light and airy, so I'll wear like pajamas underneath it, and I kind of wear it like on top as a, like a robe almost. So especially if you have to go outside, I can just like toss it on. Or if I'm like wearing just a tank top and some shorts, I can toss it on if I'm just walking around and feel kind of like it's still cold out, so. All right, so we're taking out all of the sponge rollers one by one. And you can see how curly and fun the curls are. I put my hair when it was completely wet in these rollers and I let it dry overnight. And so it's really important to kind of keep the integrity of the curl when you're taking the curlers out. You can see that dent there. That sometimes happens when you don't curl it properly. So I didn't curl it properly. So sometimes I'll throw a little heat into that just to straighten it. But for today, I'm just gonna brush it out with my vintage brush. This brush you can find online. It's like a nice little vintage brush. It kind of keeps the integrity of the curl and um, keeps the volume, but yet still can soften the curl enough. To give you a vintage look. So I'm just like brushing it all out, kind of seeing where the curls lie. The curls will typically have a mind of their own, which is why typically for these looks they say it's all about the brush out. So you'll spend a lot of time just brushing those curls to form the way you'd like them to. I'll use my hand to kind of help form that S curve right in the bang um, and I also use my hand to sometimes finger tease the ends of the curls so that gives them more body. Um, usually you would use like a duckbill clip or like 
you know, those big long um, silver clips to kind of hold it in place. However, mine tend to disappear more often than not. So I use my hand for a lot of it and also by using your hand you're putting some of those natural oils back into the curls so that way they tame a little bit more. I'm going in with my Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. I'll add a lot of dry shampoo into my hair because with the fine thinness of my hair you need a little bit of grit and product to give itself some body but also if there are any natural oils that came overnight and they're sitting there this will help kind of um, absorb those and give you some body. So, And I love the smell of the Amika. It smells like beautiful perfumey powder and I just adore it. Some of those soft curls are now starting to form and I'm kind of becoming like a little more happier with it. So I'm just going to keep brushing it and I'm going to keep forming it with my hands before I start spraying it into place. I'm not going to backcomb this look. Usually I backcomb quite a bit to add a lot of volume. This look I'm not going to do that. Um, you can see a couple little weird kinks and odd curls up near the crown there. Sometimes that happens so what I do is I'm going to take the only duckbill that I have and I'm just going to kind of place it where I can keep those curls like tamed before I start spraying. And the spray is gonna help kind of um, just kind of keep them where I want. So this is the hairspray. This is the Headstrong by Amika. I'm just gonna give it like a really good once over with spray. Now I'm just taking a headband that I got from Ardennes. It was like a $3 headband. I'm just going to um, put it kind of with the bow in the area that's a little flat to my head. That way it's going to create some balance between the nice fullness on the one side and the flatness of the other. And it's also, it just kind of makes it look a little more cute, a little more springy. And after all the fussing, we have a nice little brush out on the back and nice fullness on the front and pinned onto the side, onto makeup. Just adding a little bit of eye primer to the eyelids of my eyes. I have hooded eyes, so it's really important to have eye primer on so the makeup stays in place even when there's overlapping of the skin. This is just um, an eye primer that I'm thinking about bringing in under my own name. And then we're going to Anastasia Brow Wiz in Taupe. I'm just going to fill in my brows and something when I do, when I do vintage looks, especially from the 1940s up to the 1950s, I tend to extend the tail of my brow and I also um, over accentuate the arch just a little bit to give me a bit more of a vintage look. They technically did this quite a bit in these eras. Um, it was very popular. So I just like to kind of, you know, do that sometimes. This is Anastasia's Brow Wiz Brow Gel. So basically, it's just like a clear gel that kind of keeps the hairs in place. So after I put the color on, I will put this on to make sure that no hairs stray and I have like a unified, a, uni, a unified brow look. Next up, Too Faced the Milk Chocolate eyeshadow, eyeshadow Palette. So I'm going to take that cream bony color and I'm just going to put that all over the lid, patting it on with a big fluffy brush. I do this just so everything kind of looks like uniform and there's no, you know, um, color differences in the eyelid before I start putting on the actual shadow. Then I'm going in with 
this warm chocolatey color and I'm just going to tap it on the outer corners of the eyes and then bring it in through the crease and then wing it out to the end of the eyebrow. Um, when you have hooded eyes, this is a good way to kind of uh, give that peekaboo of color because typically when the eyes are open, you really don't see a whole lot of that eyeshadow depending on the placement. So for me, this kind of gives the illusion that I have a crease that's larger than it is. And it also gives nice peekaboo, like I said. Um, also, it's a good like um, precursor to the cat eyeliner that we'll be applying soon. And I'll also throw it under the bottom just a little bit to kind of um, tie in the bottom um, waterline as well. This is the Cat Eye Liquid Eyeliner on a brush tip. So I'm just going to start by doing a nice tight line close to my natural eyelash line. So I'm just going to go in and make it fairly thin, I don't want to thicken it up too much. And towards the end there, that's where I'm actually going to draw the cat eye flick. So I'm just going to freehand that and then wedge it into the cat eye, wedge it into the rest of the eyeliner. Trying to make it look as smooth as possible. I have to curl my lashes every day because they're so straight. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of a curl before I go in with my mascara. I'm using the Better Than Sex um, by Too Faced Mascara. This one's pretty dry. I probably should buy a new one soon. But until I can get out in the public, I'm just going to use this one until it's all gone. So just a couple swipes of the mascara, really combing it in. And then also not forgetting to do the bottom lashes as well. Um, mascara is really important because it opens up the eye, especially if you put it eyes. This is what's going to really make the big difference for you. This is the Color City Naked Pencil. I'm just going to go into the waterline of both eyes. This is going to give you a very doe-eyed look, um, and it's very signature to the pinup looks, having that white or the cream waterline. It gives you kind of like, um, I don't know, just like a doe-eyed look, like I said. So I'm just going to go in with that on both eyes, really give them a nice open look, and then we're going to move on. Face Atelier has my favorite foundation, the Ultra Skin. This is shade number 5, and I'm going to buff this into the entire face. Um, it's got really good coverage, so what I do is that after I've applied to the full face, if there's some areas that need a little more coverage, I'll just spot treatment them with my fingers and a little bit extra foundation. And I'll buff it in with my fingers and just tap it lightly. I'm going to set my hot spots with the uh, Won't Stop NYX setting powder and the hot spots I mean like the spots that get kind of shiny throughout the day so the chin the t-zone and under the eyes just to set that so it doesn't crease I'm gonna use the matte bronzing powder by essence to do my contour I have a very warm undertone so using a little bit of a bronzer it's just going to accentuate the warmthness of this makeup, but also it's going to look a little more natural versus a very cool tone for me. And I'm just going to go into the temples and hairline, under the cheekbones, and then I'm going to just lightly buff a little bit on the jawline out down the neck, just to kind of keep the warmth going down all the way so everything matches.
I'm taking just some light warm blush and I'm going to go on top of the contour and up into the temple there. Just give myself kind of like some warmth in the cheeks as well. Um, I'm pretty light handed when it comes to makeup so I don't really typically use a lot of shimmer or highlight. Especially for the pinup looks, I kind of try to keep it as fresh face as possible. So the less amount of makeup the better. I'm going to go into this Milani, I think it's the 003, no 008 um, lip liner. It's uh, like a fuchsia like my hair. So I just line the lips and then I fill in the lips. And then with the top lip, I overdraw the sides slightly and the cupid bow just to kind of give it a little more fullness, which is true to the era of the 1950s and 40s. After lining and filling in the lips, I'm going to use Urban Decay's Firebird to give a little more moisture and a little more color into the lips. And after that, I'm going to give myself a spray of Britney Spears Fantasy. That's my favorite perfume. Don't judge me. And then going with some setting spray and an atomizer. I put all my setting sprays and atomizers. I find that they're just a little more relaxing. And this one's Urban Decay All Nighter. And I put it in like an atomizer that I find at the um, little shop at the mall that sells like all sorts of fun little gadgets from like Japan. inspired looks those are my favorite to do um, also please stay tuned for all like my vintage thrifting finds and all the vintage lifestyle stuff that I have thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this look um, please stay tuned to subscribe and link like this subscribe and like this video and comment if you want to know anything more or if you just comment if you do like it um, it helps me out a lot knowing what you guys want to see um, also stay tuned, I'm going to be showing you guys a few of my favorite vintage gadgets I found out throughout the years and also a couple of my thrifting hauls and things like that. Um, stay healthy, stay inside, and I'm happy to be spending this weird, weird time in history with you.